Hello everybody, this is Charlie with the Gossiker Application staff with another video on how to. Today we're going to talk about calibrating your touch setter and your spindle probe. These are a great handy little um, addition to any machining envelope, but they really aren't worth a thing unless you've got them calibrated just right. A lot of people think that a spindle probe is nothing more than an expensive edge finder, but if you've got it calibrated properly, you could turn your machine into a CMM as well as an automated edge finder that makes life really cake for you. And as for the tool touch setter, you can imagine how delightful it is to be able to rely on an automated piece of equipment to make sure that your tool length offsets are identical to one another without having to use an offline tool setter. So this video is going to help us to figure out exactly how to make those two match and to calibrate them routinely. That being said, someone might, may ask, uh, how often should I calibrate these? The spindle probe I like to check at least once a month, although calibration is not necessary unless it's been bumped or removed from the machine. The tool setter I'll check once a month as well, but the only time you really need to recalibrate it is if you've pulled it out of the machine unless you happen to have one of these fancy little doohickeys from fifth axis. This is a quick release mount for the optical tool setter from Renishaw and it repeats like a dream so you can pull your tool setter out and replace it without having to do a recalibration. We're going to start today by calibrating the spindle probe and the very first thing I always do is to grab a very fine indicator and make sure that your ruby is still running dead true to the center of uh, rotation. The software will compensate if the thing happens to be off a little bit. However, eh, we don't want to make it work that hard. Plus, we'd like our baseline to be absolutely zero. So as you see here, I have a tenths indicator and I will release the orient position on the spindle and then just give it a little rotation. And there we've got about, oh, well, it looks like I got some tension on the, uh, on the needle, but I've got about two tenths worth of run out. There are four small uh, set screws right at the base of the, um, the holder itself that will push the entire stylus body away from the indicator needle. And by tightening one and loosening the opposite, you should be able to get this thing right on the button. I won't stress if it's less than one or two tenths, but uh, again, if you can get it right on the button, that at least will help to, help to establish a baseline and uh, just make your life easier for you. I also do try to make sure that my indicator needle is right on the tangency of the sphere. So if you jog your Z axis up and down until you find the high point and then do the same for the X axis. Now you'll find the highest tangency of the sphere. It looks like I pretty much got it there. Now as long as I have the indicator out, I might as well do the same thing for the optical tool setter stylus. This one is, this OTS is mounted 90 degrees from what is normal, but really doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that this thing is flat in both axes. Now as you see, I'm going across the uh, the longitudinal axis of the tool setter. There are two socket head cap screws, one that will raise the tip and one that will lower the tip on the front portion of the OTS. Now I will sweep back and forth across the longitudinal axis of the OTS setter, in this case the x-axis of the machine, and uh, uh, see how flat we are. That, um, that adjustment is made with two small set screws, similar to the ones that were in the spindle probe, that are based right there, right on top of the OTS. By tightening one and loosening the other, you can get the entire body of the probe to um, roll about the longitudinal axis of the touch setter. Now that my equipment is indicated, it's time to put a ring gauge inside the machine. I use a 40 millimeter, but uh, you know any size that you have is going to be great. Now the Renishaw software does not require you to find the exact center of this ring, but I still want to do it manually simply so that I will have a reference datum once I've calibrated the spindle probe to know exactly 
uh, how far off my my calibration is so as you see here I'm just going to use a standard indicator and sweep the center and uh, once I have that exactly where I want it I'm going to set that to a work offset just you know as if it was a piece of scratch paper I want to be able to um, after doing this calibration probe the same ring and find the result from Renishaw and see if it uh, differs at all from the uh, from the origin that I pick up manually so I'm gonna get this just right on the button I don't want to have any kind of variation whatsoever and once I find the exact center of the ring gauge, now I'm going to translate that into a work offset. If I'm not already looking at the operator screen, I will just push the operations button on the control panel and then find the work setup tab on the upper right hand corner of the screen. I'm going to pick a work offset that's not already being used by something else, in this case number five, and by tapping select zero and OK, that's now the current active work offset and it's displayed in my position screen. To set it I'll select X, calibrate, input and do the same for Y, calibrate, input. So now the X and Y for work offset number five are set to be the center of my ring gauge. So now my spindle probe is all set and ready for the calibration process. It's time to start focusing on the tool setter. This tool setter requires a tool of a known length. I choose to use a gauging standard. This one is from Meritool.com. It measures four inches gauge length and 0.3 diameter. If you don't have one of these, not a big deal. All you need to do is grab a gauge pin, stick it in an ER collet chuck, and measure it in the old fashioned way by uh, using gauge blocks just to find the exact gauge length of that particular tool. Before I use this tool for calibration, I want to make sure that I register it in my library, make sure that I populate the height offset with the accurate length of the tool, in this case, four inches. Now that that's all set, I'm ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to find the Z position of my ring gauge by bringing my new four inch tool down to the top of the block I'm using a gauge block here so that I don't uh, <laughs> have a little oopsie. But as soon as the gauge block fits right underneath it, I know now that my spindle face or my gauge line is exactly four inches from the tool and two inches from the gauge block away from the surface of my part. So I'll go back over to my work setup page, find the work offset that I was using, highlight the Z, and I will calibrate six inches, or in this case, I'm just going to do four inches for the uh, for the standard plus the two inches of the gauge block. Hey, did you know you could do math in the control? Boom. Now my zero position is set. I could also say calibrate 6.0. The number's exactly the same. No harm, no foul. For the people that have the Renishaw GUI installed on their machine, we're going to use this cycle. If you don't have the Renishaw graphic user interface, then uh, let's skip forward in the video and I've got a program sample in the, uh, at the tail end of this that, where you can run this manually. But for those with the graphic user interface, find that on the left side action buttons. And when you have your inspection cycle on, we're gonna touch single cycle. And let's start with the spindle probe. So we'll touch spindle probe and we normally you go to your measurement cycles we're gonna go with the calibration cycles this time by touching that here are the two different calibrations that we're gonna to do today let's start with the XY calibration and if you notice the picture shows you where to position your machine just hand wheel the spindle probe into the rough center eyeball is good you don't have to be exact for Renishaw but put it in the center of your ring gauge and below the level of the surface so that when it moves straight out it will make contact with your ring gauge so let's touch the XY calibration it's showing us exactly our position we do need to put in the diameter of our ring gauge and we, mine is 40 millimeters so let's say 1.5748 and then by hitting the send button it's going to 
send a piece of code to your MDI. Make sure your machine is in MDI mode. I, that, that goes without saying if you've run the GUI before, you know that it'll pop up an alarm here that says, hey, wait a second, I'm not in MDI. But once you send that to MDI, it will send a piece of code into the buffer and you can then hit cycle start and execute the process. Once you execute cycle start, the probe will start touching the quadrants of the circle to find the center, and then it will do vectored probes into the ring gauge just to get a dimensional value from spindle center line to the outer portion of the ruby in every direction that it will move. Just as a footnote for you, uh, it is not a bad thing on the first time you execute this cycle to have your feed rate turned down, something less than 100%, just to make sure that something doesn't go funky. However, once you're certain that the cycle works, make sure you do the final calibration in 100% feed rate. This is because the, um, the switches in the probe may trigger at a different time if your feed rate is modified during calibration from your standard motion. So once the process has been completed, now we're going to do the Z-Touch. So I'm going to come back to my home screen just to show you the process of going through it again. You could have used the back page. So single cycle, still working on the spindle probe, calibration cycles. Now we're going to do the Z-Calibration. And this is where it is very important that we set the surface of our ring in that previous step. Our reference surface based on the process we just used is going to be zero and we do need to make sure that that work offset that we set to the center of the ring gauge and the top of the face is the active work offset. Once we do that we'll hit the send button again. Now a couple of beeps on top of the ring gauge and we're calibrated in Z. Now that our spindle probe is fully calibrated let's move on to the touch setter. I'm going to go back to the home position on our GUI, the home button. And now I'm going to mount the tool, the, the calibration standard in the spindle. Hit my single cycle, express to it that I'm using the tool setter. And once again, I've got a calibration cycle button right here on the GUI. I need to pick which type of stylus I have for my machine. It's a round stylus, so let's go ahead and touch that guy. The stylus diameter, as you notice the picture, it's referring to the actual plunger on the optical tool setter. So mine is half inch. The diameter of the calibration tool, notice the graphic changed for me, isn't that slick? Mine is 300 thousandths. Now this enter length, get length, and tool number, I always leave this on enter length, even though I went through that process a minute ago of entering the appropriate tool length offset in the offset table. Uh, some of the older macros did not take into account a difference between a value entered here and one in entered into the table. So I always leave this at enter length, and the length of the calibration tool in my case is four inches. The optional stuff, I'm not even worried about. I'm going to leave that alone. Once I have this all in place, I'm going to hand wheel the calibration tool so that it is above the stylus. Let's get a picture of the stylus. Um, it's above the stylus by about, oh, 200 thousandths, give or take, and roughly eyeballed in the center. Doesn't matter if it's exact or not, I just need to get close. Then I'm going to hit the send button, send the program to MDI and execute. Once again, if I want to run this at a reduced feed rate, it's not a problem. As long as I do my final calibration in 100% uh, feed so that it will calibrate at the same speed at which it's going to measure the tools. Once this information is in MDI, I'll hit the cycle slam button and the uh, probe will start measuring. I'm kind of giggling here, folks, because uh, I swear I'm using the same microphone for both facets of my, uh, my video here, but I'm seeing a major difference in recording software quality, so forgive me for that. Notice that once it has touched the length, it is going to fire the spindle in reverse, and it's going to touch the sides of the stylus to find the center of the um, of the stylus for very small tools. We want to be able to measure right there. 
and a third side, a couple of touches, and we'll be all done. Once again, if you have overridden your feed rate for this, you're going to want to execute the thing a second time at 100% feed, just so that uh, everything's all the same from calibration to uh, measurement. Once it's done, it's going to stop right in the middle of the stylus, and now we're done with calibration. If you don't have the GUI, pay attention to the next few minutes here and uh, utilize the pause button on YouTube if you like. Here is a copy of programming that will do all of this stuff for you if you don't have the graphic user interface or if you for some reason need to calibrate the Akuma side of the software as well as Renishaw. Keep in mind that they do utilize two separate calibration standards so uh, if, uh, if you are using Akuma Cycles, you'll, you'll need to calibrate that side as well. So the following two programs will do both a tool setter, as you see here, and now here is a copy of a program for doing the, uh, the spindle probe. And this will calibrate in both Renishaw and uh, Akuma Cycles so that everybody will be done. So I hope this helps you out. I'm going to go ahead and shut up and let you uh, follow along with the program that you see on the screen here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your local Gossiper application staff, and we would love to help you out. By the way, my email is in the uh, profile for this channel. So if you have any questions, concerns, or would like to see a video posted on this channel, feel free to reach out to me and thank you very much.